Blitz. You heard the man. Everything he just said is absolutely true. It is the Borderland Blitz sponsored by Southwest University, and it is the longest running, most watched high school football show in town. Week two, Luke. Week huh. two. Week two. It seems like it was more chaotic behind the scenes than week one, but... I we'll guess see we'll how go chaotic with it. Yeah. it is in front of the camera this <laughs> we, time. We will. Two games <laughs> of the week this week, just like last week. That's how good the start of the season has been. And up first, we have a little bit of the old and the new. It's Andrist hosting Pebble Hills. And They're keep in mind, players. this is Pebble Hills' first year at the varsity level, and they don't even have one senior on the team. All juniors and down. Yep. It is one of our games of the week. Pebble Hills and Andrist from Andrist High. First half begins 6 nothing. Pebble Hills until Dominic Smith, the handoff to Xavier Williams, pushes it for a score. 7 6 Eagles on top. Then Pebble Hills, the Spartans respond. Orlando Puig with a pass to Justin Wolf makes it 13 7. Pebble Hills back and forth game. Andrus would respond though on this play here. Dominic Smith to Otho Redding makes it 14 13. Andrus. Now the second half was actually delayed about 20 minutes because of an injury on the field. A cheerleader was actually taken to the hospital. No word yet on her condition. We will try to update you as quickly as possible. How about the return here by Herrick Gonzalez? Big, big return there for Pebble Hills. Made it 28-27. Andrus on top. Excuse me, this would make it 28-27. Andrus on top. But Andrus too much in the end. They would close it off with what else? A handoff from Dominic Smith to Jalen Joseph. Secures the win for the Andrus Eagles. The final on this one, 35-27. to 27. Let's take a listen. Some key plays at key times. We had a couple picks there late and uh, we hit a couple of runs. We were able to get the run game going a little bit and that helped uh, take the pressure off a young quarterback. And last week, Mont won. They put up a valiant effort against Friendship but fell a little short. Uh, this week, though, another El Paso school gets a chance to try to knock off Friendship and this time it's El Dorado's turn, Luke. And how about that? That takes us to our second game of the week to the sack. We go El Dorado hosting Friendship, but it's the Tigers that strike first. Garrison Johnson getting the hand up, hand off right up the middle, who finds the end zone early on to go up 7-0. Remember that name. Yes, definitely remember that name, viewers at home. But El Dorado will bounce back. And this seems to be a common theme for quarterback Sedarius Barfield. Make it two weeks in a row. The keeper, as he hops in the end zone, that tied at 7. So the Aztecs down a score when Barfield just going to throw it up to his favorite target. And Tyquez Hampton showing off the hops as he holds on to put another six on the board. But watch this play right here. Friendship just looking like Boise State with the hook and ladder, a gain of 65 yards, which would set up who else? And Garrison Johnson yet again. This man had more than 300 rushing yards, wow. four scores on the day. He couldn't be stopped. And then to top it off, a friendship sack on Barfield late in the game. No luck late as Aztecs could not pull off a comeback as they fall. 42 to 28, and let's take a listen to Ruben, Coach Ruben Tortis' thoughts after the game. Well, you know what? The, the great thing is it's early. It's pre-district. Um, you know, we still got a lot of learning, and you know, the mistakes that we're making are definitely fixable, and that's what we've got to do a better job of. Get back to the drawing board here on Saturday, and and a good week of practice to get ready for Midland League. Well, Montwood playing an out-of-town opponent for the second straight week. As we mentioned, they lost a friendship in week one. Not badly, though. I think yeah. it was 24-14. Week two opponent is Midland. So how would the Rams fare this time around? Let's go Let's ahead take and a look take at those highlights right now, if we can. Midland and Montwood Rams ready to go. This is Midland's quarterback, Jackson Anaskavich, to Ricky Hubert for a touchdown. 7 nothing Midland then. Anna Skavich to Ricky Hubert again. I'm sensing a, a theme here, Luke. Midland goes up 14 to nothing. Montwood would respond, though. Quarterback Andrew Fernandez passes to Tyrese Andrus for a touchdown. 14 to 7 now the score. But wait, there's more. Still 14 7. Fernandez to Tyrese Andrus again. The Hail Mary. Look at that. Maybe a play of the week contender. That ties the game at 14 apiece. But Jackson Anaskavich 
has an answer, a Hail Mary of his own to Michael Galindo. This will be a touchdown for Midland. Midland would go up 21 to 14 in the third quarter. There was a bit of a delay in this one. The score was 31 to 21. Midland over Montwood again in the third quarter. So how about this one? We're going to try to get the highlights of Odessa, Odessa and uh, Franklin, Odessa, Permian and Franklin rather. Permian has their mojo going. Already at 41-0. Yes, 41-0 in the third quarter. It's Kobe Robinson on the swing pass. He takes it down inside the 25-yard line for a first down. Same try. Robinson this time takes the pitch. Too much size and speed for Franklin on the night. Permian or beast. They went big, really big. 61 nothing. They look really good. I was at that game. How about Parkland and Socorro? Parkland looked good in beating Jefferson week one 53 to 8. Here's Socorro in the red zone. Fourth and 18. Daniel Monarez heaves it in desperation, but Parkland would take over on downs. Then Parkland going to take it the length of the field. Dion Hankins punches it in. Parkland goes up 14 to 12. Parkland would go on to win this thing 27 to 14. So it's a matchup of maybe the best team in El Paso and the best team in the state of New Mexico. We are talking Americas traveling to the land of enchantment to play Rio Rancho, a team that absolutely demolished Mayfield last week at Mayfield. So let's pick this one up in the first quarter. Rio Rancho quarterback Nick Little is going to find. Josh Foley, who does the rest for the score. We talked about this man last week, and he just keeps making a statement as Rio Rancho takes the 7 0 lead. And later, who else than Josh Foley yet again with a nice move on the outside? No one's going to catch him. They go up 14 0 in Rio Rancho. They win it easily 31 to 7. Rio Rancho, they look like they deserve that they number do. one ranking yeah. in the state of New Mexico. All right, let's check out Eastwood. A dramatic comeback last week to knock off Midland Christian, taking on Bel Air this week in a rivalry game. I like their new uniforms, by the way. They're like Eastwood's like the Oregon now, basically. Yeah. But opening possession, Seth Ochoa finds Bobby Menares with the long bomb. Eastwood is in business. Next play, Ochoa would sneak it in, so the Troopers will take a 7 to nothing lead. Still in the first quarter, Mr. Ochoa would do it again. After a cheerleader break, of course, we got to put that in there. Ochoa scores to give Eastwood a 13 to nothing lead, but there's more from Ochoa. He is not done. Next possession, he strikes again. Hits Menerez with a 45-yard touchdown strike. 21 to nothing. Troopers still in the first quarter. Second quarter. How about more from Ochoa? Finds Malik Myers with a touchdown strike. All Eastwood. All day long, they go on to win by a final of 50 to 20. He went undefeated at JV level, and now he's doing quite a good job on the varsity I'd level, so. yeah, to say the least. <laughs> Del Valle hosting the Mayfield Trojans. This one started out slow, but it picked it up in the end of the first. Mayfield's Tory Lachlan scrambling left, heaves it downfield, and he's going to connect with Gavin Swinson wide open. He stays in bounds, goes 70 yards to the house for the seven zip lead, and Del Valle, they're going to need a deep breath after that one. But, the Aggies commit there. Yeah, that's right, but the very next play on the kickoff, Del Valle returns it 100 yards for the score. Jose Valenzuela, a huge special teams play to tie it up, but it's Mayfield who wins a very close one by just two points, 23 to 21. You know, I like those Las Cruces El Paso matchups. We don't have a, a lot of them. That was one of them, but that's a huge, huge win for Mayfield, mm -hmm. especially after Rio Rancho really took him apart. And on the road, too. Can't, can't argue with that one. Definitely. Well, you know, it's that time of the week. Some would say, I personally say, it's the best part of the show. The War of the Week. What do you think about it? You saw it the first week. I think people are tired of looking at us. They'd rather look at uh, Brittany Carlock and Amy Solis. Take it away. What's up, guys? I'm Brittany Carlock, and we're at a huge rivalry game this week. It's the Battle of the Helmets, so here to help me out is Amy Solis, and she's going to introduce our first team. Amy. Hey, guys, to my left, I have the Bel Air Highlander cheerleaders. Woo! Are you ready? Well, I did not graduate from Eastwood, but Adrian Ochoa, the producer, he did, and he'd be really mad if I didn't somehow represent him. So I'm cheering for the Troopers. Ladies! One, two, three! Come on, Come on! Eastwood looks like they're getting out of the cars! Well, they're starting to pull! Come on, Eastwood! Come on! They're struggling, Eastwood! Well, the Highlanders 
are just too much for the Troopers. They take it for this week. Adrian's going to be disappointed, but for now, I'll send it back to you guys. I think it's a fair trade-off. Bel Air, they don't win in the field, but on the they, they side of the They win the war of the week. Yeah. Some would say that's more important. I, guess. I don't know if I'm one of those people who would say that. But. Some do, though. <laughs> a win is a win somehow. Well, Las Cruces High, they had to travel all the way to Albuquerque for its first game. A win over El Dorado of New Mexico, not El Paso, El Dorado. Their commute was a little easier in week two, just had to go to the Field of Dreams. Unfortunately, our photographer had a family matter to attend to, so we weren't able to get the video of that as much as we would have loved to have gotten the video. But Las Cruces does get a big W. They're 2-0 and on the season now. They win 21 to nothing. It is time now to check in on the world of social media. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, things of that nature. Our very own Adrian Medina is live. Adrian? Hey, guys. How's it going? Blitz fans, I know you guys want some free jack-in-the-box, right? So I want you to go right now on your devices, kva.com, on your laptop, on your phone. Go ahead and use hashtag Borderland Blitz when you're sharing stuff, but I need you to go right now and enter to win. We're giving away two gift certificates to jack-in-the-box, $25 gift certificates. Enter now. We're going to go ahead and give them away at, uh, at the end of the show. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Adrian. When we come back, we'll hear from the other Adrian, Adrian Ocho, who's talking some Canateo football for us. Canateo and Coronado, when we come back. And welcome back to the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. It is time to check in with the third member of our team. That is Adrian Ochoa, who's out at a pretty big game. What do you got for us, Adrian? Well, that's right. Coronado taking on Canotillo. It was Thunderbirds versus Eagles. And uh, who could forget uh, Canotillo two years ago making it to the state Final Four. And now tonight they had to take on the Thunderbirds. Let's take you down to Canotillo. And this year so far it's been pretty good for Canotillo, 1-0. And, and again tonight they hosted the Coronado Thunderbirds at a 6A. The T-Birds are another team looking to make it back to the playoffs. And in the first quarter it was all about the Canotillo defense. Coronado's Alex Chavez, nowhere to go. He gets stuffed. Canotillo head coach Scott Brooks had to rally the troops in this one, especially the offense. No score until the second quarter. Canotillo quarterback Danny Alvarez will roll to his right and hook up with a wide open Joseph Boss. Joseph Boss, welcome to Enzo City. And take a look at what happens here on the extra point. It gets blocked, picked up by Coronado's Josh Shapiro. And watch this hit. Get down. And he'd get taken down, but the Thunderbirds would be penalized for a block in the back. That would been that was assessed on the kickoff. Canotillo up six to nothing. And the only other highlight for Can for Coronado came right here. Juan Pablo Romero with a 39-yard field goal. T-Birds down six to three. And Canotillo would march down the field right here from 12 yards out. The handoff to Aaron Moya, and he cashes it in. It was 12 to three at the half, and the Canotillo would just add a, a field goal in the second half 
They win by a final of 15 to three. The Eagles are now 2-0, while the Thunderbirds drop to 0-2. So a big win for Canotillo, taking down another 6A team. They'll try to make it 3-0 when they visit Bel Air next week. I'm back to you guys. Hey, maybe, All right. Thank you, Adrian. Maybe another trip to the Final Four. It's a little early, but hey, you never know. It's 3-0. Yeah, I talked maybe. to the coach, Scott Brooks, Possibly. earlier in the season, and he, uh, he was downplaying, I think, how good this team actually is. is. They look really impressive. Yeah in their first uh, couple of weeks. Moving right along, the East Lake Falcons taking on the Chapin Huskies. East Lake still looking for their first win of the season, while Chapin seems to be in good shape, despite losing wideout Brandon Bullitt to the University of Arizona. So who would capitalize week two out at Irvin High? We pick it up in the first quarter. Chapin quarterback Anthony Baird hits a wide open Mikey Leal for the score. Huskies go up 7-0, so right before halftime, Baird again. But this time, he's going to find his running back, Matthew Zubiate on the screen, who goes the distance, following his blockers like Coach always taught him to. 5-10, 10-5 into the touchdown, into the end zone rather. Chapin takes the 14-0 lead, and that is how they win it. 14-0, your final score. All right, the Hanks Knights still in search of win number one, taking on El Paso High. Let's go to the highlights for this one. Late first half, Hanks driving fourth and one inside the 10, but Rigo Jimenez is denied by Gus Alba. The drive stalls. Tigers, feed me. Now El Paso on the move. Anthony Escobedo finds Javon Thomas inside the 10-yard line. Then with 18 seconds left in the half, Nico Pomas. Takes it in to give the Tigers a 21-14 halftime lead. Let's go now to the second half. El Paso strikes it big. Pomas breaks into the clear and he is gone. El Paso goes up 27 to 14. They go on to win it 48 to 31. The Isleta Indians had a solid showing against Burgess last week, so how would they fare taking on the winless Irvin? Rockets. Well, we pick it up in the second. Urban looking to add to their lead with this field goal. But it is blocked in return for a big game by Isleta's Aaron Saldivar. He timed that jump and the snap perfectly. Still 7-0, though, Urban on top. So in the next play, off a busted play, quarterback Damian Solis really writing his own script off that bad snap with the keeper. And he's going to actually get into the end zone. It wasn't according to the play, but he made it work. He improvised, so they would take the 8-7 to seven lead. And later in the second from the 10-yard line, running back Reynaldo Flores gets a block and does the rest as he is going to run it all the way to the end zone. That man needs some oxygen. He needs some water. He needs everything he can to relax from that run. But Isleta takes the 14. I yeah, I think we all do. Isleta, though, they're going to win it. 47 to 14. On to Jefferson and Riverside. The Rangers had an easier test last week against Fabens, but the Silver Foxes hanging tough. Jefferson scores here from five yards out to make it six to six later. It's a huge fourth and one for the Rangers. Quarterback Cesar Garcia throws it up. Jordan Martinez makes the play for him to keep the drive alive later in the drive from two yards out. Running back Isaiah Rios looking for the end zone, and he would find it to give the Rangers the lead. Riverside goes on to win 26-6. Fabens and Horizon, by the end of this highlight, one of these teams will have their first win of the year, so who will it be? I guess this play is going to tell the story of the game. Fabens punting away to Horizon, and it's a little weird because no one's going to touch the ball, so the Scorpions say, all right, I'll take it. Marco Alvarado with a gimme picks up the football and takes it 40 yards to the house. Talk about a bizarre turn of events. Horizon, they win it easily, 42 to 6. So both those teams were winless entering the week. We also have Dimming visiting Burgess. Both these teams looking for a win. The Mustangs up 34 to nothing, nearing the end of the half. Daniel Garcia with the interception. Right into the hands of Gerardo Hernandez, one of the many big plays for the Mustangs as they blow out Dimming in this one. 48 to 7. And another matchup for you, Bowie, looking to make it 2 0 to start the young season against Silver City, and they did exactly that. Bowie wins it pretty easily as well, 28 to 6. Plenty more coming your way, a few more big matchups to get through. More scores and highlights when we come back.
and just to clear up any confusion, that last highlight, it was dimming with the victory over Burgess Lee. Mm -hmm. And let's go right to, uh, to the highlights. Santa Teresa taking on San Eli, if we can get to those. Oh, there we go. And San Eli's Larry Rios is going to be a stud here. He throws to wide receiver Carlos Gutierrez, but he fumbles right here, so it's recovered by the Warriors. So then later, Dominique Gozal is going to get the ball in just a moment. As you see there, the team just found out they recovered the football. And we're going in the Eagle. He's, of course, he's loving it. So if we fast forward a little bit, Dominique Dozal is going to get swarmed by the Warriors right here. That is going to be a sack. And that would be all she wrote. As Santa Teresa wins a pretty close one, just one score, 7 0. All right, let's head out far east to Clint as they host Chaparral. Pick it up in the second quarter. Philip Martinez busts this run inside, then outside, follows his blocks, and he gets into the end zone. But Clint would hold the Lobos to just that one score as the Lions win it 22 to 8, your final. And Austin Payne, a visit to Mountain View, and they come up just short as Mountain View wins it by 15, 28 to 13. How about Anthony and Lordsburg? Wildcats all over Lordsburg. The game was actually halted due to lightning in the third quarter. Anthony. They needed this after losing the Cathedral in week one, but Anthony should be a force to be reckoned with in 2A. They win it 35-6. Cathedral in Tornillo over at San Eli High, and this one was all the Fighting Irish. In the first on fourth and goal, uh, looks like Cathedral Santi Mondujando finally hits pay dirt. They say it's all about persistence, right? Cathedral rolls Tornillo in a big way, 57-6, to your final score. And just a note, Roswell a big winner today, 58 to nothing over Gadsden. And Hatch Valley also a very big victory. How, look how many points they put up, 54. A lot of they, 50s. <laughs> a lot of 50s as they top Rio Doso, 54 to 40, your final score. And Van Horn, Alpine, Alpine, 25 to 6, an easy win for them. And Los Lunas over on top of Alamogordo, 35 to 28, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break with more Borderland Blitz sponsored by Southwest University.